Hi guys, welcome back. This is part four of the greatest mini survival tin ever created. And so if this, if this is your first time watching this, in part one, I went through all of the items that are included in this kit. You can see how small it is. I'm holding it in my hand. In parts two, three, and now four, I'm going back through each item and talking about all the, the full extent of the range of the uses of every item in this kit. And what I love about this kit so much is the fact that even though it's so small, all the items in it will get you through a variety of survival situations. So whether you're in the middle of the city or out in the wilderness, or if it's a really cold day or a really hot day, or if the sun is out or if it's raining, you have all kinds of different ways to survive. If you're in this survival situation because of an act of God, or if you're being pursued by bad guys, there's all kinds of things that you can use in this kit to get you through and to get to, to survive through the situation, through a range of situations. So today, I want to talk through the last few remaining items. So starting with this mirror, okay, so it is two inches in diameter, so it is small, but there's quite a lot of space, especially if you think about other survival kits that give you a survival mirror. And the way I have mine packed is, you know, because I keep showing you, I put this linen cloth and this foamy adhesive in the top, and that protects the mirror because, you know, a lot of these survival kits will give you a signal mirror, but it's coated in that plastic, and once you peel that off, it gets scratched, it gets broken by the other things in the kit. So in my kit, it's protected. Now, I did bring your attention to in the first video that this mirror is convex, meaning it is rounded. So. This is not a close-up mirror. This is a lot like the mirror on your car where it says items and mirror are closer than they appear. So what this allows you to do is, hello, is it allows you to see a large amount of area in a small amount of space. So it's not a close-up mirror, you know, you can see, wait, how do I do this? You can see my whole face and you can see everything in the background in just this small amount of space. So this allows you to check your face if you need to check for like a cut on your face. If, you, if you're vain, you know, and you want to look at yourself, you can do that. But the reason that I chose this mirror to be beveled out like that is kind of like the same idea when you used to ride the school bus and the driver had a mirror up in the top corner. The reason was because he could see the whole bus by just looking in this small mirror. The advantage that this gives you, and again, remember, we're thinking about worst case scenario, is what if you are being pursued by bad guys? Okay, so what I like about this mirror is if you're running forward, you can see what's in front of you, but you can just hold this mirror up to see what's behind you. Instead of stopping to look behind you, which is gonna cost you a few seconds, you can just be running and looking ahead and then hold this mirror up and you can see right there who's pursuing you and who's behind you. And, you know, if you're having to hide behind a corner, hide behind a tree or something, you could hold this up to see behind you versus like looking behind you you know, and then risk being seen. So I like that. Also, you can hold it like this, or there's a little bit of a little grip back here. You can hold it like that too. But you can also, I mean, one of the main reasons for having a mirror in your kit is to signal. So you can signal with it as well. But I just like that you can look behind you and you can see a lot of area in a small amount of space. To me, that's really important when you're trying to stay safe. All right, next thing, and this is one of the things I'm most proud of in this kit. I love this thing so much. I think it's just the coolest thing I've ever seen in a survival kit. 
This is the mini LED light. As I've told you in the first video, it's super lightweight. What's also really cool about it is it's rechargeable. It takes about an hour to charge. And if you keep it on the constant light, you have about two hours of light. If you put it on one of the strobing functions, you have about three hours of light per charge. So that's not a long time. I would recommend bringing an external power bank of some kind to charge it. But the nice thing about it is you don't have to carry a bunch of batteries with you. And, you know, hopefully you're not going to need several hours of light at one time. You're just going to need to be able to see before the sun goes down and shut it off. Anyways, I like that about it. I also like the fact that it's got a safety on it. So if it's in your kit and it happens to get bumped, the light doesn't turn on. Like a lot of these little mini flashlights that they put in these kits, if it gets bumped, it turns on, but this one doesn't. You have to hard press it. And you can see there's sunlight coming through the window, but this is still a very bright light. It's two LEDs. You have to hard press it on and hard press it off. So that's a really good function so that you're not draining the battery by hitting the button intermittently if it's in your bag or whatever. Let's see what else. Okay, so you can use this obviously for a flashlight. You can, as I've shown you before, you can attach it to the elastic with this rubber band and make a headlamp. You can also attach it to the paracord bracelet and make a bracelet lamp. It's super lightweight, has two LEDs. And, oh, it also comes with this piece of adhesive Velcro that you can stick to whatever you want and Velcro it on. It comes with a rubber band and the charging cable. Okay, so now let's talk about all of the light functions because this is super cool and this is what makes this lamp way cooler than any other headlamp you've ever seen. All right, so hard press to turn it on. And I recommend starting it and stopping it on this light. Whatever the last function it was on is what will turn on when you turn it off and back on again. So I like to keep it on the constant white but if you short press it, it goes now to a strobe. So now it's going to go through seven different colors with three functions. It's gonna have a fast strobe, a slow strobe, and then the third, hit it again, it's gonna be a constant. So that was the color red. The next color is fast green, slow green, and then constant green. Okay, the next color is blue, fast, slow, constant, and then yellow, fast, slow, constant, and then pink, fast, slow, constant. Next color is cyan, yeah, fast, slow, and constant. All right, and that was all of those strobing functions for each individual light. The next function, and this is what I told you in the first video is so cool, is this is like emergency vehicle lights. So if you're being pursued by bad guys, especially if you're in the middle of the city or somewhere, if you turn this function on and just leave it in a corner or something, they might get thrown off and think that you've called the cops. Or if, you're, if you want to mimic like um, ambulance lights or whatever. They might think that you've called somebody. So that's a really cool function and I've never seen that on any other headlamp but super awesome and that could definitely come in useful in a survival situation. Then hit it again and you're going to see all the colors strobe through all the colors. And this is the fast strobe. Hit it again and it's a slower strobe through all the colors. This is, you know, Maybe you want to have a party. No, I'm just kidding. If you want to have a party while you're surviving, these are your party lights. I don't know why you would ever need those, but you have them. All right, now this is super cool, this function. Starting with white, it's going to play through an SOS. So what I love about that is a lot of these headlamps 
will allow you to press it, press the button for an SOS, but this one actually has an SOS feature. So it starts with white, the next one is red SOS, the next color is green. So each color has an SOS feature. So green, blue, yellow, pink, and cyan. All of those colors do an SOS. Now we're going to start back over with the strobe of fast, slow, constant, and it's gonna start with white, fast, slow, and then constant, and we're back to our regular flashlight. So if you leave it on that function and then hard press it off, it will start back up automatically on that flashlight function. So super cool, I love this thing so much and I can't believe that I found it and that it fits in my kit so well. All right, next thing, I've told you about my survival knife, but just to go over it again, it's two and a half inches long and when you open it up, it's four inches long. It's an actual knife, so as opposed to a lot of these mini survival tins that give you a glorified razor blade, this is half serrated and it is surgical steel and it's a locking blade which is really important in a survival situation because it allows you to do a lot of activities without having to worry about the blade closing back on your fingers obviously it's small but you can do a lot of things even with this small knife you can make feather sticks to build a fire you can cut rope and twine with it you can process small sticks. So you're not gonna cut down a tree with this, but you can process small sticks that you need to build a shelter with. You can use it for self-defense. You can tie it to a stick and make a fish harpoon. You can use it for processing small animals like gutting a fish or skinning a squirrel. You can also use it for food preparation, cutting vegetables and meat and whatever. You can use it even for eating, like in lieu of a fork or something. You can use it for that too. It's also got a plastic handle, so it's lightweight. It's not the greatest knife in the world, but to me, this is the best knife I've seen in a survival tin that doesn't cost like hundreds of dollars. So really cool there. Next thing in this kit, I've told you about this before, but this is a piece of clear plastic and the reason I'm including it is in case you want to include small items in this tin that I haven't included in the kit things like fish hooks um, or needles you can tape it to this clear plastic and then you can keep all your small items together and that way you don't have to worry about taping your small items to the tin that you might want to use for cooking food or drinking out of. You don't have to worry about tape residue and you don't have to worry about small items being taped to your cup. All right, another thing you can do with this is if you want to include medication, you can take your pill and wrap it in tin foil and then you can tape it to this clear plastic. And here I have some black duct tape because duct tape always comes in handy. So you can tape all your small items to this and because it's clear, you can turn it over and you can see what it is that you taped. You can also use this clear plastic to wrap tape around. So a lot of times people will tape a length of duct tape in their kit. So you can tape it directly to this clear plastic. Another thing you can do is you can see at the end here, I've cut notches in with a pair of scissors. If you cut notches adjacent to each other on either side of the clear plastic, you can wrap around a length of fishing line or you can create a sewing kit with your thread down here. So that gives you something to keep all your thread in one place. So that's really cool. And then just cut it off and you have your thread on that clear plastic. So that's some things that you can do with that clear plastic and just put it back in your tin like that. Um, let's see what else. Okay, next thing is the wire. This is copper wire. It is like 99.99% .99 copper. 
and it's two feet of wire. So I showed you in part two how you can use this wire in your creation of turning the whole kit into a solar oven. But some other things that you can do with this wire is you can take it apart, you can make snares with this to catch small animals. You can also use it to make a handle for your cup to get it out of the fire. You know, if you're boiling water and you have it too close to the fire and it's too hot to pick up, you can use this um, wire and put it around to make sort of a makeshift handle to get it out of the fire without having to touch it. Also, if you want to, you can take a nail and drive a nail here and here, and you can make a handle to go through, and that way you can lift it up out of the fire that way. Another thing that you can do with this wire is you can cut it into pieces and it can hold things together like sticks. Wire is really good for shelter building. You can do that. Another thing you can do with it is copper. And the reason I'm including copper and not some other wire is the fact that copper is really good for bee and wasp stings. I'm highly allergic to bees and wasps and I learned this from a friend. If you put 100% copper on a sting, like say I get a sting on my finger, and I wrap this around and keep that on that sting, the copper draws the sting out. So that's an advantage of copper wire. And then another thing you can do, which I haven't done, but I saw a guy do it on YouTube, and I wanna try it sometime, but this, you can start a fire with wire. Fire with wire. So what you do is you take a stick and attach it to this end of the wire and then take another stick and attach it to this end of the wire. And if you loop the whole thing around a log and saw it back and forth like it's one of those wire saws, do it really, really fast until you create a lot of friction. Once you've created a bunch of friction from that log, if you touch something like a napkin or dry kindling, because it's so hot on the friction end of it, as soon as you touch it, it'll catch fire. So that's really cool too, is you can start a fire with, with this wire as well as all the other things that you have in this kit to start fires with. So a lot of different ways to fire start in this kit. All right, last but not least, we have this folding cup that I've showed you before, and fr quite frankly, I don't know why I'm the first person to think of making a survival tin with a folding metal cup, because we've had these since at least the Victorian era. But super cool though, and the reason I love this cup is the fact that a lot of mini survival kits will include water tablets, and then they'll give you a plastic bag to put the water tablets in. But once you run out of water tablets, then you have no use for that plastic bag. Whereas with this, because this is stainless steel, you have an unlimited amount of drinking water. All you have to do is be near a water source and start a fire to boil your water and disinfect it, and you can drink water all day long. Incidentally, this is just over eight ounces, so it is a literal cup. You drink eight of these a day and you're fully hydrated for the day, which is probably one of the number one problems during survival situations is that people don't drink enough water and stay hydrated. So you could use this water, you, this cup, you don't even have to just use it in a survival situation. If you kept this whole tin in your briefcase or your purse, you could use this cup as your drinking cup at work. So very, very highly versatile, plus the fact that if you are in a survival situation, you can cook your food in this. You can boil water, you can cook in this. You can also, while you're boiling your water, you could be steaming fish or vegetables on this top tin. You just have to keep something there to keep the, um, a little bit of air but you could steam something up here while you're boiling your water, so dual purpose. You could also, if you're wanting to 
not have a big footprint for a fire, but you want to boil your water, you could take your fire starter and put it in this lid and start your fire and feed little sticks and twigs in it and keep that cup balanced on top and you could boil water right there in the lid of your tin. So that's really cool too. And also, if you have a friend with you and they are thirsty, <laughs> once you boil your water here, you can pour them a little bit into this and you can share water that way. Um, just keep in mind there is a hole about halfway up to attach this keychain, so you you can't fill the you can't fill the water to the brim of the lid, but you can still share some water that way. So that's cool. And let's see what else. Oh, while you're boiling food in this, you could be sauteing food in the lid. There's just so many uses for just the tin itself that I bet you can think of more that I just can't think of. But I just love this kit. I think it's awesome. And if you are interested in this kit, it is available for sale on eBay, and it looks like this when you have the whole thing together. But stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to tell you all the things I didn't put in this kit and why, and then I'm going to show you where you can go to make your own tin. In, in case you don't like my kit and maybe there's some things that you want to tweak, I'll show you the price points of all the different objects and details in this. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Otherwise, have a blessed day.